Okay, guys. Right, we're going to work on your multiplication. And you've been used to using grid multiplication to multiply two digits by two digits. And I'd like you to start by showing me how you would do that for these numbers. So I'm going to suggest you do 23 multiplied by 45. And could you use the grid to have a go at that, please? Just put a line through it, love. Quick as you can. Have we all got 1,035? I'm going to show you my way of doing this calculation and I want to see what you think about it. And that gives you 1,035. So we've all got the same answer. Now I'd like to have a look at this and think, hmm, where do you think this comes from? What's the same about my method and your method? And what's different about my method and your method? You don't you don't separate it. You still write it as one whole number instead of separating it. Well, you've done two different answers, and on the grid you do four answers, so it looks like it, that's way quicker. It looks like my way might be quicker, because I've only had to do two answers, and you've had to do four answers. Can anyone see where the 900 is in your grid? Look in your grid, see if you can find the 900. You found it, Katie. 20 times 45. 20 multiplied by 45. And what about the 135? Yeah? That one, that's 3 times 45 because the 120 plus 15 equals 100. Fantastic. What I'd like you to do now is have a go at doing my way. Right, here's your question. 41 multiplied by 26. 41 multiplied by 26. Are you happy with that, Tom? Yeah. What do you think the answer is? Um, 1,066. 1,066. Put it back into the grid and see if you're right, because I know you're confident with the grid. When the children are moving from the grid method to the standard algorithm, I want them to see, first of all, that actually I've condensed the steps. So where they were doing four steps in the grid, they're now going to do two in the standard algorithm. 41 multiplied by 6. Why don't you write that over here? 41 multiplied by 6 and do that in the compact way here. 41 multiplied by 6. So for some children who find that move more difficult, I might encourage them to do two separate algorithms. So they might do 6 multiplied by 32 and then they might do um, 20 multiplied by 32 and they do those as two separate steps and then combine that. Were you right, Tom? Sure? Fantastic. So where's the 246 in your grid? Across there. Yeah. And where's the 820? Across there. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to give you another one. 36 multiplied by 32. Yeah. So what might you do first here? You need um, 2 times 36. Fab, do that then. So just forget about this for the moment and just do the 2 times 36. Good. So now you've done 2 lots of 36. You've multiplied 36 by 2. Okay, now what are you going to do? Um, 36 times 2. 36 times 30. 30, good. Because three thirties is nine hundred, and you had another hundred, which makes that thousand. So what have you got all together? Uh, so what do you make it? One thousand one hundred fifty-two. One thousand one hundred fifty-two. And um, what do you do? Two times six, which is twelve. Okay. Then you do 
two multiplied by... I think if the children can see where the standard algorithms come from, if they can refer it back to the grid and understand what all those steps are and how they've been condensed in the algorithm, then they're much more likely to be successful in calculating using the algorithm. OK. Add the zero, because it's going to be a times 10. It's 3 times 6, which is 180. If they're just trying to remember some steps, then we find children can make mistakes. Then you do 30 times 30, okay. which is 900. Good. So you put the 900 there, but you can't fit, so you have to do 1,000, okay. and then cross off the 1 again. Then just add, to, add it up here. <laughs> Fantastic. So then you get 1,152. Brilliant. Do you like my way of doing it? Yeah? When you wrote it down, it looked hard, but it's actually easier than I thought it was going to be. It was easier than you thought it was. That's what I always like to hear. Multiplication fits within our whole school calculation policy, um, and um, we look at the progression um, from the national curriculum, and the teachers work together to um, come up with what we think are the key steps to develop, first of all, towards the standard algorithm by the end of year six, um, but also um, to different mental strategies that the children need. So we've kind of got two different sides to, to our calculation policy where we're, we're developing both written and men mental calculations, but the whole staff work together to share different strategies, to share which manipulatives we'll use in which year groups um, and how they'll be used so that we have the consistency right through from year one to year six.